Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of shade from large growing shade trees. So if you have a city lot, they probably would not fit for you, but in larger properties of an acre or more, they would be just fine. But the benefits of shade are many. Not only uh, is it a cooling effect on your property, but it also is a cooling effect when they're planted down a city street. They shade the blacktop, uh, it's markably cooler, and in some cases you can even do without air conditioning. But talking about air conditioning, when you strategically locate a tree on the west side uh, of your house, or maybe the south side, it will actually, can actually shade your air conditioning and make so much more uh, efficient cooling of your house, but not only that, it will lower your electric bill. Now, the other benefits of it, of a shade tree, is aesthetics. It's been said that it can, they can uh, strategically locate trees and landscaping could add as much as 25% to the value of your house should you decide to sell. Uh, the other thing is uh, they have an effect not only on cooling and real property value, but they have an effect on absorbing a lot of water and runoff. Now, it's said that a heavily forested area can absorb as much as 90% of the water falling on it during heavy rains. And that is very important because downstream, flooding will be lessened and so will the stream bank erosion. So you win all the way around. Now, a while back when Mayor Bloomberg was uh, the mayor of New York, he decided to cut back the tree budget. And the reason he did, because the city was having budget problems and they had to get the money from somewhere to um, keep from having too much of a deficit. So what happened is the Why Trees Matter people went to him and they were talking to him about that was not a good idea and here's why. So they, pre uh, they did present the evidence about the absorption of water by the trees, the cooling effect, aesthetic effects of the trees, and not only that, um, he reversed course. Now he, he reversed course, he's not dumb, and he decided that it would be worth to keep the budget, and not only that, he increased the budget for planting the trees and they have even been shown to lower crime in the city. Uh, examples of large shade, shade trees would be sugar maple, red maple, silver maple, the hybrid autumn blaze maple, red oak, pin oak, white oak, tulip poplar, American elm, Ash, not so much anymore because of the emerald ash borer, which is an invasive species from China that just about wiped them out. Uh, lindens, ginkgos, uh, conifers to a certain extent could be used as a shade tree. Dawn redwood or metasequoia, bald cypress. European beach, tri tricolor beach is very popular, riverside beach with the Red foliage is popular, American beech, and even magnolias. So there's a wide range of trees you could choose. Now for a yard in the city, you could still have shade, of course, but that could be, a, that could be accomplished through things like uh, flowering crab apples, hawthorns, service berry, red buds, and the like. And many of these are, are actually flowering and they will add to the aesthetic appeal to your property as well for you and for your neighbors. But they will get to about, but depending on the species, they will get to about 20 to 25 feet, so not overly large. But going back to the back, uh, to the other trees, one of the trees that uh, could have been used uh, at one time that would grow 120 feet tall is the American chestnut. That is not yet available, but there's a lot of breeding going on with that, with genetic engineering, to make it 15 sixteenths American and 1 16th 
Chinese, which will make it resistant to, to the, um, uh, the fungus that killed all of them, starting in 1910 when it was first brought in inadvertently, and then all the way through the 1950s and 60s. But many of these other trees, uh, some are fast growing and some are slow. Let's talk about some of the slower ones. One would be the sugar maple. The sugar maple, I think, is the tree of all the Northeast United States. It's the ones from where maple syrup come from. Geauga County is full of them. Here, even in the Akron area, there's many, many around. It's the tree of New England. And those trees will eventually get to about 70, 80 feet tall, if not taller, and they will live a very long time. At the nursery here, we had two twin sugar maples that stood for many years, but they were uh, rotten in the heartwood eventually because they were so old. And one we had to cut down because it was getting ready to fall. The other one, the wind blew down, and when they were cut uh, to clean up the mess, it revealed that they were both born in 1905. Now, that's uh, not a big deal. I mean, they did die, and I was sorry to lose them, but their babies are all coming up nearby, and some of them now are approaching 50 feet or more, and they came from those two trees. Along the old house to the nursery, there is another tree. It's a red maple, and it's no less than 80 feet tall. And it is shading the house on the south side, which is good because it lets the sun through in the winter time to heat the house through solar energy, but it keeps the house very cool, almost to the extent that you don't need air conditioning except on the hottest of days. And there's a picture of that tree taken about 1890 with the workmans that built the house and they're standing out there with their little grandson getting a picture taken and the tree at that time is only about 15 feet tall. So again, that tree is approaching 150 years old and it's very, very precious. Now some of the slower growing trees are worthwhile and one of them would be a white oak. Uh, white oak just takes its time at Norton Center Cemetery, there's seven of them in total, and they were probably at least 100 feet tall. Uh, growing very slow, they take their time, they don't um, fold around. European beech can be quite slow sometimes too. Uh, bald cypress is kind of a medium growing tree. One that you may not want to plant is the American beech. Now, it does get the heartwood in a hollow uh, trunk in it when it gets very old. However, it takes, it grows slowly and it takes a very long time to grow that tree. So by the time you would have to worry about that, uh, it would be no incident because all of us here today, uh, including probably your children and if not grandchildren, they would all be dead. So keep that in mind. If you like European beach, there'd be, or American beach rather, there'd be no uh, reason not to plant it. Another tree to consider is the Liriodendron tulipifera, and that is the tulip poplar. It grows extremely fast. It will uh, get you shade very quickly if you don't have any, especially on a bigger property. It'll grow 80 to 100 feet tall, and the seed pods when they're formed in the fall, are the favorite food of cardinals. So if you like cardinals, this is the tree to plant. Now the other one uh, is the American elm. Now the American elm died from blight. It came in through Cleveland from imported logs from Holland of all places. And there was this beetle in there that carried the fungus on its back. And pretty soon all around the Cleveland area, then it spread to almost all throughout the country here east of the Mississippi, all the elms began dying because that beetle would bore into the tree and then the fungus would take over the rest and cut off the water conducting vessels feeding the tree and the trees would simply die. Now the elm has quite a history. 
uh, its silhouette, which is vase-shaped, there's no other tree like it, except maybe the zelkova, which is not a native tree. But the zelkova grows much slower, the elm tree grows like a weed. So growing to 75 to 100 feet tall, they grow and they grow and they grow. Now at one time they were used all throughout the eastern United States, up and down uh, city streets, because it would be like a tunnel going through them when you would drive down the road, and they worked very well. However, what the cities found out when they plant one species of tree down that street, uh, that is not a good idea. So it would be good to plant the same kind of tree to match on each side of the street, but not on all the streets. And that's when they began uh, diversifying. Be noted too that the American elm is the tree where in 70, 1775, George Washington took command of the Continental Army of that summer of 1775 uh, as he was appointed by the first Continental Congress. And that tree stood until 1923 in Massachusetts until it was blown down by a hurricane. So an American elm will live a very long time. The autumn blaze maple has become very popular. Um, it gets a red fall color, usually around the end of September. Very bright, brilliant red. And it gets, um, also goes into mid-October. But the thing with the autumn blaze, it's a cross between the silver maple that is weak wooded and the red maple, which is not. And the other fact to keep in mind about that with uh, that tree it's noted for its fast growth, its hardiness, and uh, again, the fall color. Okay, the other one uh, that I did forget to mention is the red point maple. Red point maple is a rubrum type. Um, it has very bright leaves uh, on it in the fall, bright red. Dark green leaves in the summertime, hardy, easy to grow. And I like it better than the red sunset maple, which is a, which is a rubrum type. And the reason for that, in periods of uh, droughty summer, red sunset uh, can tend to need water. If it doesn't get it, it'll wilt and it doesn't hurt it. But the, trunk, but the red point maple looks much better and it's strong wooded. Now the problem with the silver maple, it's very fast growing. The fall color isn't all that great, but it is weak wooded and you have to watch out for that. And maybe if you like that, you can plant it out in the yard uh, somewhere away from the house and that would be the same thing for a uh, weeping willow, which has become very popular in the last few years. Other oaks uh, too would be good. Red oak, pin oak, they grow relatively fast. Pin oak has the pendulous branches on the lower half. Uh, red oak grows to about 80 to 100 feet tall. Uh, it's one of the dominant trees here in Ohio. So is pin oak because Ohio is a hardwood state and also spreads all the way over into Pennsylvania and farther down into the Appalachian Mountains. So again, uh, to review, you can strategically plant the trees to give, give you shade, to cool the house, also, it's used, they are used in the city to do the same thing. It can improve the aesthetic value and the real estate and the real property value of your home. And there's many benefits to be had by planting a large deciduous tree.